Hello. In this video, we are going to look at two quantities that can tell us where equilibrium is to be found for a particular chemical reaction, and two other quantities which tell us in which direction we can find equilibrium. Let us assume the following generic reaction where the capital letters A and B refer to reactants and where capital letters C and D refer to products. Similarly, the small letters A and B are the stoichiometric coefficients for substances A and B and small letters C and D are the stoichiometric coefficients for the products C and D. We can define a state called equilibrium where for this generic reaction the rate going from left to right often called the forward rate is equal to the rate going from right to left often called the reverse rate. When these two rates are equal to each other then we are at equilibrium. We define a quantity called the equilibrium constant K that has this particular uh, expression where the concentrations of the products are in the numerator and the product of the concentrations of the reactants are in the denominator. The given expression is equal to the equilibrium constant so long as we are actually at equilibrium. The equilibrium constant is a number and this number will be different for different chemical reactions and it will depend upon the temperature. We can also define a quantity called the reaction quotient for which we use the symbol of a capital Q and notice that it has a expression that is almost identical to the expression for the equilibrium constant. The only difference is that we can define the reaction quotient at any particular time in the chemical reaction. So uh, while there each reaction at a particular temperature there is one and only one equilibrium constant, there are for the same reaction an infinite number of possible reaction quotients. The reaction quotient Q is useful because if we compare it to the value for the equilibrium constant, it will tell us where we are relative to equilibrium. Suppose that when we evaluate the reaction quotient Q, it has a value greater than the equilibrium constant. What does that tell us? This tells us that we have a greater concentration of products and a smaller concentration of reactants than we would at equilibrium. So effectively, we have moved too far to the right and the system will respond by moving towards equilibrium, which is going to be moving towards the left. Now let's suppose that the reaction quotient Q is less than the equilibrium constant. What would that tell us? That tells us that the concentration of products is smaller than it would be at equilibrium and or that the concentration of the reactants is too high relative to equilibrium. Therefore, the system to move towards equilibrium, which it wants to do, is going to now move right. The final possibility is that the reaction quotient has exactly the same value as the equilibrium constant. What will that tell us? In this situation, the uh, concentration of the products divided by the concentration, the product of the concentrations of the reactants is exactly equal to the equilibrium constant. So that tells us that we are at equilibrium and we're not going to see any uh, movement away so long as the temperature doesn't change and no other stress is put upon the system. So we can recognize that we have reached equilibrium. Here we have the relationship between the Gibbs energy delta G 
and the standard Gibbs energy, delta G naught. One way to interpret delta G naught is it is what delta G would be for the given reaction if the concentrations of A, B, C, and D were all identically equal to 1. Now, can, from this particular expression, we can actually derive a very important thermodynamic result. So first, let us assume we're at equilibrium. So if we are at equilibrium, we know that delta G is equal to zero. Also, if we're at equilibrium, then the reaction quotient Q is identically equal to the equilibrium constant K. If we make those substitutions into the previous equation and do a little bit of uh, algebraic tidying up, we get an incredibly useful result. We get that the standard Gibbs energy, delta G naught, um, is equal to minus RT times the natural log of K. So here we have a, uh, another thermodynamic quantity that is directly related to the equilibrium constant. And that particular quantity is the standard Gibbs energy, delta G naught. An interesting question to ask would be, well, if the standard Gibbs energy, delta G naught, is directly related to the equilibrium constant, is there any quantity that's related to the reaction quotient Q? It turns out that the Gibbs energy, delta G, is exactly such a quantity. Note that if delta G is negative, then our reaction is said to be spontaneous. Another way to think about that is that means that it's going to go uh, a greater rate going in left to right than it is going from right to left. So just like the situation where uh, Q was less than K, here we have a situation where the system is going to move right. And here we just put that Q is less than K to remind us that delta G being negative, it gives us essentially the same information as Q being less than K, the system in response is going to move to the right. Our second case is that the Gibbs energy delta G is positive. A common way to interpret that is to say that the reaction is non-spontaneous. Not spontaneous going from left to right. But not spontaneous from left to right means that it is spontaneous going from right to left. So therefore, we have a situation where the system is going to move left. Recall that this is an identical situation to the one we looked at previously, where Q is greater than K. And for our final possibility is where delta G is equal to zero. We recall that delta G being equal to zero is equivalent to our system being at equilibrium. And recall this is identical to the situation where Q was equal to the equilibrium constant K. So I thank you very much for your kind attention. Stay safe, stay healthy, and as always, have a good one.